Oh boy, it's early. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I am more of a 3 a.m. to 11 a.m. type of guy. When I have to wake up before, say, 10, it's not good. I just don't go to sleep early enough to do that. Like, I'm a late, I'm a night owl. I'm a late, late upper. And uh, so waking up at, well, I actually woke up at like 7.30. And I couldn't fall back asleep. <clears throat> so I've just been up since about 7.30. So that's been fun. But it's around... Two to two to nine right now, and we are going to go over this banned and restricted announcement live, live as it happens. So, <clears throat> got the page up here, and we're just going to refresh. It is now eight fifty nine, so within a minute, we should have a should have a little little linkerino here, depending on. I assume. That we're all running on the same Windows clock. My Windows clock says 8.59. I assume that's set by the internet. And not my CMOS battery in the BIOS. Because it's 2023. So. That's the technology I'm running under the assumption as. So for those who don't know. My name is Frank. I'm a content creator and a game designer. And I uh, top 80 to Modern Pro Tour back in 2016. So that was fun. So I, Modern was one of my favorite formats. I wrote for TCG Player for about seven years, and I had a column called Modern Monday. I was one of the biggest early adopters for Modern, I would say. So I, I've I've had a good, good uh, reputation with the format, and it is now 9 a.m., and I, I hope this is the right page. Because <laughs> if it's not, it's going to be awkward. But also, like... This is wizards.com news, so where else would it be? You know? News. If it's not on the news page, I can't imagine where it would be. This is where announcements go, right? So, <clears throat> show, it, show it to me. Pop it up. It's now 9 a.m. on the dot. So, story? That's just going to be the story, the game story, right? Let's check. Nothing? Okay. I don't... It doesn't seem like something that would be late. <clears throat> it seems like something that would be scheduled for 9 a.m. If I just click magic... Uh, there's nothing here. Okay, this is just, you're just trying to sell me stuff. Articles. It would be under articles, 100%. This is where it would be. And if you go down here and you search for band, December 4th. Okay, so it didn't show up on the page. Okay, Karn Geological, oh no. That's kind of what I was afraid of. Okay, well... This is this is kind of what I was thinking here. So, standard no changes. Karn and Geological Appraiser were the two cards I was expecting to get banned in Pioneer. I did not expect Smuggler's Copter to get unbanned. The blue the the white red Boros deck is one of the strongest decks in the format right now. And that feels like a very very easy deck to just slot Smuggler's Copter into. So, not excited about that. A lot of people were talking about Smuggler's Copter getting unbanned. I am kind of shocked that that happened. Um, I personally remember playing with Smuggler's Copter. I remember playing against Smuggler's Copter. I remember top eights having 32 copies of Smuggler's Copter in them. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, especially since we just had Subterranean Scooter pr Schooner printed, the, the blue Smuggler's Copter. Um, so that, that's interesting that, that like we could have just had that be Smuggler's Copter in the format. So that's kind of weird to unban it. Fury and Up the Beanstalk are banned. Orcish Bowmasters... Not banned. That was an expectation of mine. I did expect Orcish Bowmasters to get banned. I did not think a Grief was getting banned. I don't think Grief is the problem. A lot of people are like, Grief is a problem. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Explorer, Karn, and Geological Abrazer are banned. Explorer being the same kind of format as Pioneer. It's like a it's like an empty Jarena Pioneer. Um, Pauper Monastery Swift Spears banned. I don't play Pauper, so I can't really speak to that very much. 
We have a lot to discuss today. Before diving into each of the formats, we'd like to provide a bit of a clarity to our announcement dates in Windows. Going forward, we'll be operating with a slightly more flexible announcement cadence. Future banned and restricted announcements will occur two to five weeks after each set's release. This allows us to capture data from large events like Pro Tours, while ensuring we make changes before the next set begins previewing. We want to establish a clear picture of each format before you start evaluating and collecting cards from the next set. That's that's good. I think that's really important. I think that that negates some feel bads. Um, so we have a window following each main set release. It's still our goal that most and or all changes to standard happen once per year during the fall banned and restricted window that's associated with the next the new three year standard rotation. Changes to Pioneer Modern Legacy and Vintage can happen during any main set release window. The next such window in 2024 will be around March 11th following the release of Murderers at Karlov Manor. So about three months. If you missed the last week, we talked about our overall philosophy for banning and restricted for our banned and restricted announcements, the timing, and much more. You can check out that, that video here. Standard. <clears throat> I'm going to skip standard. If you guys want to read it, you definitely can. Uh, I think my biggest focus are is Pioneer and Modern. Those are the two formats that I enjoy uh, the most currently. <laughs> We want Pioneer to provide a diverse, as diverse an experience as possible. It is a place where you can have fun using cards from past standard environments without content being printed directly into it or having content naturally rotate out of it. Uh, just to be clear, that makes it a non-rotating format, not an eternal format. Modern is also not an eternal format. People love calling modern an eternal format. Eternal in Magic means that all sets are legal. Um... So you can play cards from any set. That is not the case for Modern. It's not the case for Pioneer. Those are just non-rotating formats. Uh, so Legacy, Commander, and Vintage are the three um, Eternal formats in Magic. Uh, it is their largest format that gets its content solely through the standard pipeline. As a large format, generally only the most powerful or synergistic cards of cards printed through standard will find a home here. And since it is a format full of powerful cards, proper caretaking is required to ensure it stays as fun as possible. Okay, I agree. The last time we took action on the format was in June of 2022, about one and a half years ago. The plan is to return to a more active role in managing Pioneer. That's, that's pretty good. I think a year and a half is probably too long to look at the format. <laughs> During the year after its creation, changes to Pioneer were frequent, sometimes with multiple changes in a single month. Moving forward, we'll be actively using our main set release band and restricted announcement cadence to take better care of Pioneer. Solid. Solid. Even though the metagame share and win rate of mono green Nykthos decks have been within a reasonable range, the deck has simply been a large component of the Pioneer metagame for most of the format's lifetime. With Karn, the Greek creator, capable of finding threats and solutions to whatever the deck encounters... It can be quite difficult to go over the top of this strategy. This causes the metagame to either try to go underneath it or try to ignore what it's doing with their own combo strategy, effectively bending the metagame due to its existence. I, yeah, I mean, that sounds right. Karn just being able to get any sideboard artifact you want at as soon as he hits the board. It's like, it's like, it's like a diabolic tutor, basically, that just stays on the board and has access to 15 cards that aren't even in your deck. Uh, it can be quite simple to go The consistency uh, and strength of this deck also makes it very difficult for various types of fair mid-range strategies to exist. Karn's range is so broad it can facilitate convoluted infinite combos that make the format less approachable at little to no opportunity cost. Additionally, Karn's ability to naturally suppress artifacts is likely keeping a spread of interesting cards from being played. While it has recently been on the decline in terms of metagame share, it is clear that the deck had a warping effect on the metagame for too long and for these reasons, Karn is out. The introduction of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan brought new toys to the format. The Discover mechanic is featured on such cards as Geological Bridger, Trumping Carnosaur, and Quintorius Cond. I, um, a lot of people were like, oh, they're going to ban Quintorius Cond and Trumping Carnosaur. And like, those cards are not the problem. Those cards cost five and six mana. If you're discovering off of five mana and six mana cards, um, you're playing fair magic. That's fine. The problem is you're going turn two, make a treasure token, turn three, Geologic Appraiser. And then Geologic Appraiser, if you don't have removal for it, similar to Splinter Twin. If you don't have removal for it, you win the game. It's a Splinter Twin-esque feeling card. It's a four mana card that when it resolves, if you don't have a response, you lose the game, essentially. Trumpeting Carnosaur costs six mana. 
and you can like basically pay three to like shoot something and discard it. Like it's a very cool card. It's a really versatile, like strong finisher type card. I think it's really cool. I'm putting a copy in my cube. Same thing with Contorious Cond. Like if you're filling your deck with a bunch of clones, like uh, Spark Double, um, you know, whatever you're putting in there, Phyrexian Metamorph type cards. Um, if you're filling your deck with those, that's okay, great. I mean, your deck is going to be naturally weaker anyway, right? And you have to draw a five mana planeswalker that you can negate, you can spell pierce it. Like you can do all kinds of things to a five mana planeswalker. Um, it's just a it's a weaker version of the deck, which is why it's not as popular. And I think it's totally fine for that combo to exist when it costs five mana. Like that's just my opinion. So anyway, has given rise to brand new strategies that don't play any other cards naturally costing four or less aside from cloning effects. When left undisturbed, these decks can either produce enough creatures to win via combat or enough Quintorious triggers to deal lethal damage to an opponent directly. Being able to win the game on the spot on turn three with Geological Appraiser after creating a single treasure token puts a bit too much pressure on folks to be a good thing for the long-term health of the format. Yeah, that's what I basically said. Well, it's not clear that this is the strongest thing to be done in Pioneer. Without some form of interaction, players can lose the game as early as their own second turn. This doesn't meet our long-term vision for the format, where players can enjoy a variety of macro strategies before losing the game so early. If every deck must run one or two mana interaction spells, the format shrinks. It's not even you have to run those spells. It means you can't do something on your turn, right? Like, it's the same thing with Splinter Twin. Like, I could play a three-mana Kitchen Finks on my turn against Splinter Twin, but then you die, so the problem isn't that you can't, you have to run those cards. The problem is you have to keep your mana up and not play naturally. You can't play a two drop. You can't play a three drop because as soon as you tap out, you lose the game. It's a, like I said, very Splinter 20. And this is why Splinter Twin's not getting unbanned and you maniacs keep thinking it is. And I don't understand it. Like anyone who thinks like Splinter Twin is getting unbanned, like doesn't remember how oppressive it is to play against a deck that you literally just can't tap out against or else you die. We'll keep an eye on the Quintorious decks. It can win as early as turn four after resolving solely its namesake card, but that extra turn allows opponents to set up their own game plan. Right. Like this is, I, I agree with this and prepare like turn five and turn four. You've, you've probably heard this before, but one turn in magic, the difference between six mana and seven mana, the difference between five mana and six mana. These are all huge. Those are, these are bigger numbers than they, they appear. Uh, we ban we be banned Smuggler's Copter back in December 2019. Since then, many new sets have entered the format and such, and as such, the format has naturally grown in power over time. While unbanning is not something we do very often, we believe the format can absorb it successfully. Reintroducing it will create new deck building puzzles or revive old ones and provide additional diversity. Smuggler's Copter is unbanned. With the actions we're taking along with the impacts caused by recent sets, Pioneer is going through a good amount of change. I am excited as well to see how the format adapts. And we monitor both the data, the data and your data or data. What do you guys say? And your sentiment to help us continue pushing the format toward the most fun place. It can be great, great. When we last spoke about modern in August, we were most concerned about the new cards from the Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle Earth, namely Orcish Bowmasters and the One Ring. I thought, I thought Bowmasters was going to go because I think it's this. It's I think Bowmasters and Fury are two sides of the same coin. I I think they're both oppressive to small creatures. Bowmasters is in 40% of modern decks, 38%. 38% of decks in modern play Bowmasters, and a lot of times it's four copies. Four out of 10 decks. If you play against 10 decks in a row, four of them will have a play set of Bowmasters. That's a lot. While these cards are powerful players in the metagame, another card is continuing to suppress what's possible in the format even more. Fury most often plays a 4-4 double striker that clears the opponent's board. <clears throat> Makes play four four play does, oh four four because it's getting a plus one so I'm kind of right. Makes playing with creature decks nearly impossible. Rakdos Evoke has only risen in metagame shares since the modern pro tour this summer, and coming in right behind it is four color Omnath, also featuring Fury. Yes, I agree. The Omnath deck is also very very sweet. Um, I don't think Up the Beanstalk has a huge share of the metagame. I think it's like eleven percent or something really small, seven percent something low. But <clears throat> the problem is, it's very good. And I think it, I, I just don't think it's doing anything fair. I, I don't think this card was meant to be played with a bunch of free spells like Leyline Binding or Fury. I think it was meant to be like a standard or pioneer card that you're playing like big, big dumb idiots with and just exploiting it with cards like Fury or Solitude or Leyline Binding. It's just not, I don't think that was the intention, but we'll see what they say. Uh, played in a smattering of other decks as well. Fury is keeping several diverse and interesting strategies at bay. And for this reason, Fury is banned in modern. 
Removing Fury will impact both the play rate and win rate of Rakdos Evoke, or it might just destroy the deck, which is it's fine. It doesn't have to be a deck. Players are currently using four more copies of Undying Effects, like Not Dead After All, to rebuy Grief or Fury. Without Fury, the opportunity costs... I, I do think the deck is going to merge into a, a, the black-white strategy. I think just replacing Fury with Solitude and some of those cards with, like, Ephemerate, I think is really good. Um, I, oh, look, they, they're saying that as well. Okay, great. Uh, becoming, it is possible these decks being to transform into white versions that utilize Solitude and or Ephemerate, however, a rebought Solitude is not as threatening as a 4 well, Correct. Uh, with double strike and provides the deck less coverage against the metagame. We believe the removal of Fury will widen the format, allowing players to explore, explore additional strategies, especially with low toughness creatures. Finally, fewer overall Rakdos evoke decks in the metagame will also likely reduce the total number of Greek, Grief and Orcish Bowmasters players will encounter. That's true. I mean, with, yeah, with the Rakdos evoke deck gone... Orcish Bowmasters will be played in one fewer decks, um, assuming that deck is not as prevalent. Um, if it just switches to black white and the black white decks have Orcish Bowmasters, that's it doesn't do anything really. Up the Beanstalk is one of modern's newest inclusions. Subsidizing many cards in the format that cost five or more mana, however, it is rare for a player to pay anywhere close to five mana to cast the cards they're using with Up the Beanstalk. This is, I mean, I feel like I'm just I'm just saying this, this, all of this. Um while removing Fury from the format will certainly impact the usage of Up the Beanstalk, we don't believe that to be enough. It is remarkably difficult to interact with the two-mana enchantment profitably, as the card replaces itself me right. Like, Up the Beanstalk coming into play and drawing a card, just being a two-mana cantrip means it's it's like zero cost. It's it's there's no cost, there's no deck building cost, there's no there's no resource cost. Two mana is your is your expense, and you're just replacing a card. Um, with players often playing a free spell on the same turn since they get such a great return on the deal, it's particularly telling when players have concluded that cascading into Up the Beanstalk is more advantageous than a zero mana option like Crashing Footfalls or Living End. For these reasons, Up the Beanstalk is banned in Modern. Uh, a bunch of Legacy... Okay, they're they're addressing like brainstorm Force of Will and Wasteland. I I've thought brainstorm should be probably banned in Legacy for a long time, but I'm not a Legacy player. I have no skin in that game. I'm a I'm a very small Legacy player, but um I I think the ubiquity of brainstorm is just too much in that format. I think it's in like fifty percent of decks. Every blue deck has four brainstorm for Force of Will, but Force of Will I think is a little more necessary for the format. Um. We believe the pillars of legacy of legacy that players have enjoyed for many years are very important. Players want to play with Brainstorm, Force Will, and Wasteland, and thus they remain, even though they would have been been removed from other formats long ago due to their ubiquity. <laughs> okay, this is hilarious. I love that they're using the exact wording that I'm using because that makes me feel that makes me feel smart. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So that's it, man. I um. Yeah, I was expecting Fury, I was expecting Orcish Bowmasters, and I did come back and make an addendum to my article, or my, my video last week, and say that I did think Up the Beanstalk was also going to get, get hit. So, I'm two out of three. I did not see Smuggler's Copter being unbanned, but I think it's just because I have PTSD from Smuggler's Copter. I don't think it's a fun card. We'll see. We'll see. And, and like like they said, they're going to keep an eye on the format, so I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, okay with that. I... Am much more willing to take a let's see how it goes approach when it comes to unbannings. Um, I like the option to play with more cards, but I also like getting rid of cards that are taking up the entire format because I think that that speaks to playing with more cards, right? I like them to unban cards because I want to play with more cards, but I, I want them to to get rid of cards that are 40, 50% of the metagame because I like playing with more cards because those cards are keeping other cards out. So that's pretty much my philosophy. And that's why I get excited about bannings and unbannings because I think they, they're meant to promote the same things. They're meant to increase diversity uh, and increase the number of cards that people are, are seeing or playing with in a, in a given, in a given format. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm excited to play some modern. I'm excited to play some pioneer. I get to sleeve up smugglers copter again. So that's going to be fun. And uh, I'll see you next time guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you later.